probably Dickens, actually. I mean, I'm, I went to a rather peculiar school for somebody who's now doing what I do. It was a kind of technical school. I mean, there was an art department in as much as there was an art master and we painted, and there was an English language department, but not an English literature department. Um, and I was introduced to Dickens, um, well, by virtue of the fact that my mother had a, a, a complete works of Dickens, you know, those blue cloth-bound volumes that lots of families have. Um, and early adaptations by the BBC of Dickens. Um, and I just loved that almost overuse of adjective that Dickens had, you know. Um, so that's kind of what turned me on to the power of the word, really. Yes, now and again, um, there are one or two books that I kind of put in a suitcase when I'm working away somewhere. Um, not Dickens, as a matter of fact. I mean, uh, the last time I read Dickens was when I did Bleak House on television, although Andrew Davis did a pretty good job of adapting it. Mm. And it's always quite a mistake, I think, really, for actors to walk around with a copy of the source material and when they're working on adaptation and it can be a pain in the ass to everybody, you know, because if the person who's adapting it has done his job properly, there is no need to carry that around. Um, but uh, I have a, a romantic novel in verse by Richard Aldington, who is a not very widely read writer. Um, he was one of the imagists along with Ezra Pound and I found this slim volume years and years ago in a bookshop in Chichester. Um, and it's an extraordinary piece of work. And I, um, I just I take that around with me sometimes. It's heavily romantic, but it's beautifully written. I find writing very hard work, actually. Um, I used to play tennis with a, a rather good writer and not a bad director either, a guy who'd been an actor called David Leland, and I said to him when I was trying to write something, you know, I said, what do you, what do, you do when you sit down in front of a typewriter, as it was then, and there's absolutely nothing there? And he said, oh, there's always something there. It might not be what you want, but there's something there. He said, so you write what is there, and eventually what you want to be there will kind of find its way through. Um, and I have found that to be true, but I find it a laborious exercise. Um, but I hopefully, the more I do it, the better I will become at it. Yes, I, I, th there, um, there comes a point where you have to just put it aside. Um, I mean, what I've done <coughs> is read and read and read and read and read and read and read until it's coming out of my ears, do you know, um, and refer to it from time to time. And, um, because, you know, we're talking about screenplay adaptations which go through innumerable drafts, um, most of the time probably, you know, into double figures. So really, by the time you get to draft five, the book has long since ceased to exist, really. Um, and, and of course, it's, it's also a process of abuse, <laughs> um, hopefully not in a, um, uh, in a harsh or disrespectful way, but, you know, you're, you're dealing with two different things. A book is a book, a screenplay is a screenplay. And somebody very famous, and I've, I've yet to find out who, said in film, the picture tells the story, the words are just the music. Um, so that, you know, the business of adapting is to do with starting with something, taking what you want, putting that something to the side, and then making it your own. Sure. Um, not difficult. Um, the difficulty is not... It, it's The mistake I made with the first adaptation I, I did was to, was to show it to somebody too soon. 
purely because I'd been so close to it for a long time, I wanted a kind of outside opinion. But I think you have to trust your instinct and be quite hard on yourself, actually. You know, read it, and just at the point where you think, oh, I want, I want somebody's opinion on this. No, forget it. Leave it for about two weeks, then come back and read it, and then write another draft. You know? um, but the adaptations I've done, and you know, I really, I'm, I, I, it's about two and a half to date. Um, they're for me to direct, so it's really down to me. If I think it can work, it'll work. But it's a peculiar business because there's probably a case for writing two versions of a draft, one for actors and one for potential financiers, because potential financiers often, by and large, tend to be short on imagination, and you really have to spell it out, which is a bit of an insult to any self-respecting actor. So it's, you have to find a kind of happy medium between the two. It depends on the quality of the adaptation. I mean, if, if I'm working on something and it seems to work and I have no questions, then I probably won't pick up the source material at all. If I find there are question marks in it to do with my character, essentially, and I don't get a satisfactory answer from either the director or the adapter, then I go back to the source material and, and material and, and, and answer the question for myself. But otherwise, no, I leave it.